Satan said, this time you've done it. Now you've gone too far. How could the Lord receive you? You're ruined now and scarred. But something deep inside of me said, Child, you're still my own. And, and my love for you is still the same. So, child, just come back home. He gave me more than I ever asked for, more than I ever dreamed. He gave me more than I could imagine. When I came back home to Him When I asked Him to forgive me He gave me a robe and a ring I said, make me as one of your servants But He made me a child of the King I thought about the years I'd wasted as I walked the homeward way. And I rehearsed time and time all the words that I would say. But when I finally climbed that last long hill, my father I did see running with his arms open wide in love to welcome me. He gave me more than I ever asked for, more than I ever dreamed. He gave me more than I could imagine when I came back home to Him. When I asked Him to forgive me, He gave me a rose. I said, make me as one of your servants, but he made me a child of the King. When I asked him to forgive me, he gave me a robe and a ring. I said, make me as one of your servants, but he made me a child of the King. Of the King. faces, uh, and you're welcome to return, of course. Uh, we have we have S Susan and Jim, and we have Larry over on this side, and we have Susie and Gary. All new faces here today. Welcome. Make them feel very welcome, if you would, please. So this morning, we have many, many prayer requests, as we usually do, uh, and I will re read the prayer request before we sing our opening song, and then we will pray right after that. Uh, so we want to continue to remember uh, Mavis Sorlin, who, who lost her husband uh, two weeks ago, and so we haven't, I haven't heard of any uh, services or anything. Uh, and maybe they've already had the services. Have you heard anything about them? No. Uh, so I don't know about any services, uh, or even if there are any. I don't know. But um, we want to continue to remember her. Uh, we want to remember um, Jeanette Shea, uh, who was going for a bone marrow transplant. Did she have that done? Well, she'll be in the hospital for the next three weeks. There next three weeks, weeks. okay. Well, Thank you, Alice. Uh, we want to remember Bob Fusco, uh, my sister Sue Goss, uh, who is getting a new procedure done uh, 
that has just been recently approved um, to for uh, lower back pain and also arthritis pain. And so that's something new that's out, so I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know what that is yet. And she's going to the hospital on Wednesday to have that done. Uh, remember her husband as well, David, who's suffering from stage four cancer. Uh, we want to remember Katie um, Mikes and remember that she's not doing well either, but uh, thankfully Terry is here um, and we're good to have you back. Thank you. And um, we want to continue to remember all of our travelers that are continuing to come back and we want to see their smiling faces here just like we see your smiling faces this morning. So uh, we're gonna sing the, the first song that we, we've sung this several times, and I really like this song, it's called, Oh the Present, Oh the Glory of His Presence, Oh the Glory of His Presence. Let's sing this song.
Father, we call on you just now. We do call on your presence, Lord, to be here in this place. As we give you our lives and our hearts, help us, O oh Lord, to revere you. We welcome your presence in this place, Lord, just now. Be here, Lord, in each person, each person's life, Lord. We love you, Father. We want you, Lord, to be in charge of this service. Lord, I pray that you would be with each one of these prayer requests, Lord, that we've, we've made this morning. Continue to be with Mavis, Lord. Touch her, Lord, in the recent loss of her husband. Lord, I pray, too, that you would be with Jeanette Shea as she goes for the next three weeks to be in the hospital for this bone marrow transplant. Lord, I pray that you would touch her just now. Help her to get through all this trial, Lord. Oh, Lord, we know that you are able to undertake for every single need. Because your hand is not too short that it cannot reach down and touch every single person. Lord our God, I pray that you would be with my sister Susan. I pray that you would touch her. Strengthen her, Lord. Be with her husband, David, as he's still suffering from the effects of this stage four cancer. Lord, continue to be with Katie, Lord, and touch her, Father. We thank you, Father, for their lives and what they have meant to us here at Oasis Church. And I pray, Father, that you would Touch her just now. Be with all the travelers, Lord, who are traveling to, to return back here from their northern locations. And I pray, Father, that you would touch them as they travel. Bring them back safely to us, Father. Lord, be in the service. Each song that is sung, each word that is spoken, and each prayer that is prayed. Father, just be here in your presence. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. The second song we're singing today is a lively song, so that's why I'm going to ask you to remain standing. Because how can it be lively if you're sitting? The lily of the valley.
quite a bit. <laughs> and sing, He giveth more grace. Thank you. 
And I asked him what was, what was the problem. And he said, well, I had to hand back a contract for $10 million. The $10 million? Why'd you hand that contract back? He says, the company was producing bad seed. Bad seed. Finances. He was discouraged. Health. Remember the time I went to a hospital and I talked to a lady and she was discouraged and I said, why? And she said, the doctor just said I have terminal cancer. Discouraged. And the husband and wife, uh, John and Cheryl, who had everything going for them, looked like, until one day they came to my office and they said, we're getting a divorce. I said, why? I said, we're just discouraged with this marriage. Discouragement. It caused to give up hope, to give up caring, to give up trying, and even to give up on God. Listen, if you will, to Exodus 6, 9, and 10. So Moses told the people of Israel what the Lord had said but they refused to listen to anyone. They had become too discouraged for the brutality of their slavery. Discouragement. Psalm 45, 42 verse 5 says the following. David said, why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put hope, my hope in God. I will praise him again my Savior and my God. Why am I discouraged? Well, today we're going to look at the Apostle Paul, who was a man who could be highly discouraged by things happening in his life. But he said the following, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 to 9, 5, 15, 18. This is going to be the base of the sermon meditation for today. I'm going to read the whole thing for you, and then we're going to come back and talk about it in part with most of the verses. Paul writes and says, Therefore, since in God's, in God, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. We reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. We don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. We tell the truth before God, and all who are honest know this. If the good news we preach is hidden behind the veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, who is God of this world, has blinded those mind of, uh, minds of those who don't believe. They are unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, the exact likeness of God. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. We ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be darkness, light and darkness, has made this his light in our hearts, shine our hearts, so that we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not ourselves. We are pressed at every side by troubles, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed and not driven to despair. We're hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we're not destroyed. All of this is for your benefit. As God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great understand thanksgiving, and God will receive more and more glory. 
That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Our present troubles are small, but won't last very long. Yet they produce for us a glory that vastly outweighs them and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now, rather we fix our gaze on the things that cannot see, be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but things we cannot see will last forever. So as we go through disappointments in life, all of us, various kinds of disappointments, are going to read this story and talk about this story of Apostle Paul and these words that he should share with us today. We begin with the words of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1, then. Therefore, since God in his mercy has given us this new way, we never give up. First thing we begin to understand when we go through times of difficulty, when we go through times of, uh, of struggle, when we go through times that we forget about God, is that we not remember that, we, that God really does love us. God really does love us. The whole story of discouragement in his life begins with the fact that we love God and God loves us. God loves us. Remember his mercy. What's mercy? Mercy has been defined as calling. Mercy is when God gives us what we need, not what we deserve. Let me read that again. Mercy is when God gives us what we need, not what we deserve. Mercy is, that, is the fact that God knows every wrong thing in our life that we will ever do, but he still shows mercy and love to us. God shows us love in this life. That's mercy. When we're discouraged, when something happens in this life that discourages us, Believe at that moment, at that second, that God still loves you. When you hear bad news, when it's difficult, when a day is difficult, when things go wrong, whenever that happens, remember discouragement and then remember very simply, God still loves you. That God made you that he might love you. God made you, that he might love you. God loves you. Then Paul goes on to say, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2, So we don't try to trick anyone, and don't twist the word of God. Instead, we teach the truth plainly, showing everyone who we really are, then they can know in their hearts what kind of people we are in God's sight. The second thing we begin to understand as we go through this text is that Paul says, we don't trick anybody, we don't twist the word of God, we teach that which is plain. That is to say that a believer must be real about their life. Paul is talking here about being authentic. We're authentic. We are authentic. We are genuine. We are real. What's what we're trying to tell people? A lot of discouragement comes when you try to be somebody else. A lot of discouragement comes when you try to be somebody else. People act like other people. People uh, uh, pose like other people. In our society today, uh, we follow other people. Uh, we look like other people, that's why we smell right, we dress right, we are right, you know, that, that uh, people who sell that kind of stuff know exactly why they sell it, because you want to be like other people. And in fact, it's important to remember that we need to be like other people to be successful. If you try to be like somebody else, we don't need two of you. <laughs> you never realize that? 
Only one of you and one of me is enough for the world. So we don't need to be like other people. You don't need to be a carbon copy of somebody else. You need to be you. You be authentic and be real about your faith. You are a child of God. You are a child of God. Remember that. So God loves you and you're his child. Third thing is that remember, it's not about me. It's always and forever about Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 5. Our message is not about ourselves, Paul writes. It's about Jesus Christ as Lord. We are really your servants for Jesus' sake. Remember, it's not about me, it's all about Jesus. The more I'm focused on, in my life, the more prone I am to discouragement. Our message is not about us, it's about Jesus Christ as Lord. This verse really tells us two things. I want to note this very carefully. Number one, not about ourselves. God puts you on earth and he has given you a unique message and unique life. It's called your life story. He wants you to share your life story with those around you. He wants you to share your life story with those around you. It gets unique, it's special. God's chosen you, God loves you, and God wants your story to be told to the world. That's the first thing. Number two, it reminds us that we're merely servants of Jesus Christ. We're servants of the Lord. Paul used that phrase a couple times in his section. We do what we do for Jesus' sake. What's our motivation? Our motivation is to tell people about Jesus. Our motivation comes from we belong to that Jesus. Why we do things we do, it's because we belong to Him. We belong to the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Four, look for His power in life. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 7. We are like clay jars in which God's treasure is stored. Real power comes from God and not from us. Here's the key word. Relax. Relax. The way to deal with discouragement is at this point, relax. Know your limitations. Why is this important, what I'm going through? When you try to handle more in life than you can, you need to relax. Don't be discouraged. Real power comes from God. Not you, not me. Real power comes from God. To picture this, Paul does a unique thing. Use the picture of a jar of clay. Now, that's us. We're jars of clay. Some are bigger jars, some are small jars. Some are taller jars, some are short jars. We're all jars. Jars are a little cracked up, which sometimes we are. We're jars. Jars can be dropped. Jars can be dropped. They break. Spiritsmen? Hurt? Pain, the drought. But that's who we really are. We're clay jars. But you know that God often puts his greatest strength in the weakness of people? Let me relate to you again. God often puts the greatest strength, the greatest gifts in the weakness was people. What do you mean to tell us that God uses ordinary people? You and me. 
ordinary people. That's a good thing. Because when good things happen, by something that's done, God gets glory. Because you know that I didn't do it. God did it. I stand up here every Sunday, or most every Sunday, and I preach. I don't know how. I didn't start that way as a kid. In fact, I often tell the story about book reports. Ever have to take a book report in school? In standing class, you read a book, standing class, and they give the book report to somebody, to the rest of the class. I couldn't do that at all. In fact, there was a story that it was a time when man was first going to the moon. And every time you get a book report, you got a rocket launch on a big board. I still picture that, a big board on the wall. And every time you gave a book report, you're on Earth here, and every time you gave a book report, it got closer and closer and closer, 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 and there you landed on the moon. I gave my book reports. I stayed here. I stayed here. I stayed here. Everybody else was on the moon at the end of the, end of the semester. I barely got off the earth. I couldn't stand talking to people. God took the weakest part of my life and gave me the ability to share. Maybe I'm still on earth, on earth like some of you might think. But anyway, but I gave, you see, that's where God works. God uses us as play jar to get the message of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, out to the world. And in fact, Paul talks about that when he says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9, we often suffer, but we're never crushed. Even when we don't know what to do, we never give up. In times of trouble, God's with us. And when we are not, down, we get up. There it is again. We never give up. We get discouraged. You may be discouraged this morning, but you never give up. You may just be discouraged this afternoon, but you never give up. You may have some kind of a doctor appointment or some kind of financial issue or something you're going to go through this next week. And no matter what the news is, you never give up. You see, in Christ, we can do that. We are not down, we are beaten, we are never give up. How is Paul able to say that? How is he so resilient that he could say that? What makes Paul able to go on to get up every time he's knocked down? Here's why, 2 Corinthians 4.15. And all of these sufferings of ours are for your benefit. And the more of you who are one to Christ, the more there is there are to thank him for his great mercy. And the more God gets glory. Notice what it says. All of these sufferings are ours for your benefit. The sufferings we go through are for the benefit of somebody else. Do you hear that? The benefit, the troubles we go through are benefits for somebody else. He says all this stuff we go through. Now for the Apostle Paul, you have to think about the things he went through. He went through imprisonment. He went through beating. He went without food. He went without clothes. He was shipwrecked three times in the night. All these things happened. Why? For your benefit. He could see beyond what was happening to him for the benefit of others. Use your pain, use your struggles, use your hurt, 
your discouragement to help others. To help others. What in your life has been so painful that you need it to be shared with somebody else? What in your life can you share with somebody else? Your greatest ministry will come out of your deepest hurt. Your greatest ministry comes out of your deepest hurt. Many of you know that I'm a recovering alcoholic. And I had a number of years I was drinking and I could deny that it was a problem. It was denial. And by the way, that's not the river of Egypt. That's real denial. <laughs> and the more I denied, the more disappointed it was. You see, I thought if I denied it, I'd feel better. The more I denied it, the worse I felt. Until finally, I had to give it to God. I admitted to God who I was. And I began the road to recovery. But the greatest blessing of that all, of all that, came when I began to share it with others. I worked for a long time in the Celebrate Recovery. If you know Celebrate Recovery, it's a Christian uh, uh, recovery program. And in that program, you had to teach about 25, I think it was, lessons in a row on various aspects of being recovery. And I had to do that over and over again. I had probably maybe, I don't know, 12 times or so, I don't know how many times I taught that. But every time I taught that, every time, I thought about something else. I thought about something else to say. I thought about somebody else that was going through the same struggle of recovery that I was going through. And the lesson was talking about it. And I was teaching it. And finally it dawned on me that it was for my benefit that it was an alcoholic. It was for my benefit that I could benefit others. I could benefit others. I could tell them what was going on with their life. I could say with the Apostle Paul, I use my pain to tell others. You see, is there something in your life that you can share with somebody else. Your life story about what God has done for you that you can share with somebody else in this life for their benefit. Paul goes on, 2 Corinthians 4.16. That's why we never give up. If our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. Take time to recharge and refresh and renew yourself. This is the third time he said this. That's why we never give up. We keep talking. We keep sharing. We keep overcoming discouragement. Renew yourself each day. We didn't do it. We're not getting any younger. We're all going through the process of aging. By the way, I read some statements of the process of aging this week that I thought that you, you'd like. What's the secret to having a smoking hot body? Cremation. <laughs> Which underwear brand do seniors love the best? It depends. <laughs> I will that again for a minute. <clears throat> Age is an issue of mind over matter. If you don't mind getting older, then it really doesn't matter. <laughs> and I love this one, last one. 
I called the incontinence hotline recently. They asked if I could put on hold. <laughs> I answered, I am! Okay. You can't stop the aging process. We make jokes about it, but it's going to be real, and it's real. Paul says, I renew myself daily, not outwardly, but inwardly. I renew myself every time I hear the Word of God, every time I pray, every time I talk to God honestly about my life. I become charged. I become recharged. I become renewed. My actions are finally His action. Finally, Paul writes, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 and 18. And so he says, For our present troubles are small, won't last very long. And they produce for us a glory that is vastly outweighs them and will last forever. Oh, so we don't look at the troubles that we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on the things that cannot be seen. For things we see now will soon be gone, but things we cannot see will last forever. This is the big one. This is the last one. We focus on eternity. Know what Paul says. Paul says, our present troubles are quite small. Hold on. Our present troubles are quite small. Paul says that? The guy who was, what, shipwrecked three times? Imprisoned three times, several times? He was beaten? He went out food, he went out clothing? Those big discouragements in life? Paul says, are quite small. What's he doing? He's comparing our earthly struggles to what's coming, to eternity, to heaven. It's a matter of perspective, you know. We live life without. You can play your troubles. We can be discouraged at every turn in life. We can be discouraged by all the stuff that's happening in the world, or we can pick up and go on and never give up. The small rewards in this life don't compare. Don't compare to the glory that's been revealed to us in Jesus, in heaven, at the last world, forever and ever, and ever. Somebody once asked me, how long is forever? Yeah. I said, forever. They said, how long? Forever, and ever, and ever. Who could say that? Who could say that? Paul could say that? Just remember, it's not up on the screen here, but 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 says, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan, torment me. What was Paul saying? He apparently had a chronic problem, a chronic illness that was there even at the time he was writing these words. And Paul could say, I never give up. You and I can say that if it's 70 or 80 or 90 years or long we're going to live, we never give up. Because what's that compared to the trillions and trillions and trillions of years in heaven celebrating in glory with Him, with the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. So He says, and here's the key, we don't look at treasures which we can see right now. That's what discourages you. If you focus too much on the things 
of this world that you focus on right now, that come and go, that break, that disintegrate, that rust away. No, we rather look forward to what we have not seen. He's talking about heaven. He's talking about glory. For the troubles that we will see soon, will see soon, will be over. But the joys to come will last forever. That's, that's, that's how you overcome discouragement. Two verses to remind us. Hebrews 12, 2. So, let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, on whom our faith depends from beginning to end. He did not give up because of the cross. On the contrary, because of the joy that was waiting for him, he thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on a cross, and he is now seated at the right hand, right side of God's throne. And Galatians 6, 9 says, let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't get discouraged and give up. These are encouraging words from God's Word. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we ask that you would help us each and every day to focus on you and you alone and not get discouraged, but to find in you peace and comfort and hope and joy. And when discouragement does come, help us to focus on you and your mercy. Help us to focus on the fact that you are there for us and you will lead us and guide us in your love all the days of our life. And help us to see, Lord, how that discouragement that we might be feeling at that time, what we go through in this life, are really stepping stones to help somebody else in their life, to give them encouragement, to help them to find you and to find love for you in this world. And then, O oh Lord, we want to pause in this prayer to remember those in Israel going through the difficult time with Hamas and evil and murder and war that they're all involved in. Bring peace, O oh Lord, to that region. Peace, O oh Lord, that only you can understand. Peace, O oh Lord, that only you can give. Peace, O Lord, among people, that they might see them not as an enemy, but as a friend. O Lord, we know that's difficult. We know that's limited by our own efforts. With you, O Lord, it can happen. With you, O Lord, there can be peace. With you, O Lord, there can be peace and joy, and love, and care. We commit that into your hands, and especially those who have lost loved ones. We ask that you be with them and give them a special peace as only you can. We pray all this, Lord Jesus, in your most precious name. Amen. Let's stand if you would, please. You know, in this life, there is no end of things to make us discouraged. No way. So many things around us can make us discouraged. But if we have faith in God, who can move mighty mountains, He will get us through. And that's the key today. Let's sing this song.
Jesus Christ, be with you now and may you always. Amen.